All right, well, it looks like we are live on the air here on High Top Sports Network. Josh Rattengoss with you this afternoon. I'm going to be doing some stuff here. Uh, doing some stuff. You know how it goes. Um, as this game gets underway, Armstrong and Freeport, WPIL non-conference. Change up Madison Baker, and she gets the strikeout to end the Freeport top half of the first inning. Uh, my phone's doing a lot of work here, so <laughs> bear with me. Uh, I'll get the game changer up, and we'll get you lineups and... Take you through the action during this game. Interested to see what this Armstrong team looks like. State semifinalist last year. Two years prior, made it to the state championship game. Uh, no gold medals, uh, but a gold in the whip a couple years back. Jenna Klontz walk off home run in that game against Penn Trafford. I'm sure many remember. Um, that was an exciting game. And the Riverhawks fell to Shaler last year in extra innings in the WPI, or excuse me, in the PIAA semifinals. Freeport will rely on ace Sydney Selker this afternoon. The birthday girl. Her birthday was yesterday. So happy to birthday to Sid. She will be continuing her softball career at Akron uh, next season. So much more on the horizon for Sid Selker. And I'm going to get another camera in here so you guys can get zoomed in on the pitcher and the hitter, catcher umpire. I'll be doing that. I'll be getting your scoreboard up here in a second. Thanks to Armstrong Indoor Athletics, today's official broadcast partner and scoreboard sponsor, AIA, the premier training facility in the region. Baseball, softball, they have youth soccer leagues even in the back there where they put in that gorgeous indoor turf. It is a, a sight to behold. If you've never seen it, check it out. You can find out more at AIA.team. All right, well, the uh, Freeport went in order there in the top of the first, excuse me, Madison Baker, uh, starting for the River Hawks. Baker taking over for Cam Sprankle. Sprankle uh, was the pitcher on those two state, turn, state final appearances and the state semis last year. Sprankle now graduated. So Baker had been waiting in the wings for a little bit, and she now gets her chance. I'll tell you exactly what she did. She got Abby DeJitis, and then Sid Selker struck out, then Reese Selker struck out to end that top of the first. So a good start there for Baker. And we'll get it back to the game stream. As I said, the phone is uh, doing triple duty right now. Uh, running the stream off the mobile hotspot thanks to Verizon seems to be working well uh, and I uh, got the game changer on too so I keep putting my phone far away from me that's not uh, I'm gonna take this drink off this table too because uh, with my track record it's getting spilled so leading off against Sid Selker is Emma Paul and she needs no introduction just a tremendous all-around athlete basketball softball and they got her bat and lead off this year, so that is Armstrong manager Keith Schaefer's philosophy to get Emma Paul as many at-bats as possible and put her in that number one spot. I mean, she's got the power. She's She's got the power numbers to hit, you know, three, uh, which is where, you know, kind of the conventional knowledge of putting your best hitter is because you want them to drive in runs. Uh, but more and more with the analytics in baseball, Major League Baseball kind of trickling down to other levels of baseball and, of course, college and high school softball, uh, you'll see a lot of the times uh, with good teams, you know, their number one hitter might be their best power hitter, might be their best, you know, uh, OPS. So it's interesting that Coach Schaefer is doing that with Emma Paul here to start the season. Paul hitting in that one spot. All right, I'm going to work on the uh, other camera here real fast. Ugh, if I stand up, I got my knee on concrete there. It didn't, didn't feel great. But uh, we're going to get another camera up for you, get you zoomed in. And Paul takes a ball in the dirt. And trust me, she has a pretty razor-sharp eye um, at the plate. You're not going to fool Emma Paul. And she hit one of the most incredible home runs here last year that I've seen. It's, pro it's not a big park at all. It's kind of a homer dome, really, and, and this senior class is... Woo! Sid Selker blows her away with the heat, so Paul doesn't can't catch up. And right as I'm talking about how well she hits, Selker dialed it up a notch and fired that one right down the middle. 
And Paul couldn't catch up, but hey, we're going to give Emma, Emma a pass on that one because she's still in basketball mode. She took her team to the WPIL championship game and the PIAA quarterfinals, so we could give Emma a pass on that one. Early season strikeout against a very, very good Division One pitcher. I mean, not easy to jump back in when that's what you're facing, but Sid Selker, give her credit. She dialed it up right there, and that was straight heat. There was no... There was no... Um, confusion as to what that was going to be. And that ball hit deep to center field. Back to the fence and it's going to carry out of here. Home run, Shelby Cloak. Didn't even give me a chance to get set there. Shelby Cloak on the 1-0. Or excuse me, the 0-1 pitch goes deep dead center field. And boy, unlike the past couple of uh, games here between Armstrong and Freeport, it's actually a nice day. And the ball kind of just carried out. You can kind of see, I don't know if you can see it on your screen. I think you can on the Armstrong dugout there, the American flag hanging up top. And it was when Cloak was up, now it's blown the other way, of course. But when Cloak was up, it was kind of fluttering out this way. And Cloak got that up into the jet stream and got it out of here. one nothing. Riverhawks, one away in the bottom of the first inning. A solo shot by Shelby Cloak gets Armstrong on the board. Oops, got my microphone mix, 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 yeah. mixed up there. So at the plate, right now a new face for these River Hawks in the lineup. Isabel Prezenik, a sophomore. And she gets bat on ball, goes to the gap. That one is over the right fielder, Gourley. And in the second one, an opposite field double is Isabel Prezenica. Back-to-back extra base hits for the River Hawks. And another runner in scoring position for Armstrong. So Armstrong uh, getting a piece of Sid Selker here after she struck him a ball out. Uh, Shelby Cloak goes deep. And then Prezenica, opposite field, got over Gourley's glove. Uh, just short hopped the fence there. And in with a stand up double is Prezenica. And now we got Jesse Pugh. Just one of hit, I, I still think about it to this day. One of the most ridiculous home runs I've ever seen. Uh, it was in a state playoff game down in Bedford, and I think that thing is still going years later. Probably got up into the um, stratosphere and orbiting the sun. Pew swings through that fastball. And so last year, you look at this Riverhawks team, they're missing, obviously, the entire outfield uh, graduated. Jenna Klontz uh, was the home run leader. Pew led in RBIs. But they're missing Cassidy Adams in center field and Emma Smerick and right. A lot of speed there. A lot of, well, Smerick, especially in the playoffs, would hit for power. <laughs> especially down at Mars. That uh, Joe Rhodes and I joke that that is going to be renamed Emma Smerick Field. She did so well there in so many big Whippeal and state playoff games. Um, oh, there go my rosters blowing away. I'll be back. Uh, ooh, I'm out of breath there. Had to run those rosters down. They were blown away. And on the other side of this new concession stand they have between the baseball and softball fields, I saw Nate Bailey. I said, Nate, what are you doing? Run those down. He was looking at his phone. He said he didn't see them. So Selker gets Pew on strikes. Pardon me while I catch my breath. Not much of a sprinter anymore. I'm going to tuck these. Oh man, there we go, right under the computer. 
so they don't blow away. <coughs> and at the plate right now, Abby Bauer. Riverhawks up one nothing on the strength of a Shelby Cloak solo homer. That is where we are. <coughs> oh man, pardon me. I'm telling you, I, I'm, not, I'm not a runner. I used to run cross country, those days are long gone. And uh, yeah, that one caught me by surprise. I just saw those rosters blown away and I didn't want to not have my information, so away I went. That's the real life situations you get here on High Top Sports Network. So Selker now uh, behind Abby Bauer, 3-0. and oh. We're going to work on this other camera here real fast. And then I'll get the scoreboard up for you, and we'll be good to go. And, ooh, Selker just... Oh, she did get the strike call. Wow, I was going to say that was painting the black there. Sit Selker with a nice delivery. And uh, not much that... Bauer could do with that. I mean, that was that was paint and black. So a nice play. Or a nice pitch, excuse me, by Selker. And a walk, though, issued on the next pitch. And that's... Come on, you gotta be kidding me. That's the audio. Nate! Yeah! Big Nate with the hands. Thank you, Nate. Nate Bailey tracking down the case for the audio interface that I'm using. It just went flying. I'm sure you can hear the the wind rustling up here. If you've ever watched a game on High Top Sports Network, you've heard that wind up here high atop the hill in gorgeous Manor Township, PA. Okay, let me do this. Um, so, Riverhawks, after that two out walk, have two on here. Selker. Oh man, I can't catch a break. My stuff's exposed away. I thought everything else was uh, too heavy to blow away, but apparently not. I don't even know what that was. It just went flying past me, but it's definitely mine. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I'll tell you here in a second as that ball gets away from Reese Selker who is the backstop for her sister, Prezanica advances to third base and up to second, the pinch runner. That is Lily Guthrie, the freshman, getting out there and on the base paths. So Guthrie moves ahead, as does Prezanica. So two in scoring position, swinging a foul ball away there by Natalie Ziegler. So uh, if you've watched this Armstrong team over the past four years on High Top Sports Network. You're hearing some new names. And a lot of these girls, uh, sophomores and freshmen, getting a chance now that the, uh, well, the, I guess you would call them the foundation, have uh, kind of moved on, aside from Emma Paul and Jesse Pugh. That ball chopped towards first base, fielded, and tossed over. Schmidt covers as Clark fields the ground ball, and the Riverhawks leave two in scoring position. But they get on the board. Shelby Cloak, long ball, just got over the center field fence, and that makes it 1-0 Riverhawks. And there go my rosters again. I got, I got nothing. Nate is like Johnny on the spot over there. He is the man. The one and only Nate Bailey. I mean, you're, you're saving me, man. Thank you so much. I, I wish I had some rocks up here to just... Yeah. <laughs> Nate Bailey, fleet of foot, tracking down my rosters again as they blew out from under my computer. So I'm putting my phone on top of them. Then the audio interface case can go in there under a mountain of wires. And I'm going to take a quick break here from speaking, and I will get that other camera up and running here for the top of the second in just a minute, thanks to Armstrong Indoor Athletics. Today's official broadcast partner and scoreboard sponsor.
<coughs> Pardon me. Got a lot going on up here. Try and level this. I'll try and call the action here, Baker, on the hill. And she is facing the first baseman uh, for the Freeport Yellow Jackets. That being Lauren Clark. So the first batter for Freeport. This inning is Clark. <clears throat> and that one fouled away by Clark back to the screen. Count now, two balls, two strikes. Leadoff batter Clark here. Might hear some cheering. There's a JV game behind me. Another strike out there for Baker. She gets Clark. One away here, top of the second. All right, what can we do? We can do it all. All right, and uh, after the strikeout of Clark, swung on, first pitch, fastball, and lifted. Uh, it says I got an error here. I don't see anything on my end. Let's check the old YouTube Creator Studio. Uh, well, a little ground out there to in the inning, one, two, three, once again go. The Yellow Jackets. Okay, let me see if I can uh, find what's going on here. Yeah, I mean, everything looks solid on my end here. Uh, we'll take a look. a little bit. Hopefully that did it. Everything uh, looking good right now. Uh, so, the score after one and a third is Armstrong. One, Shelby Cloak solo home run there in the bottom of the first. And Freeport, nothing. Madison Baker doing a good job so far against these Yellow Jackets. Take a look at Selker as she delivers to Jordan Klingensmith, a big uh, playoff hero last year for the Riverhawks. Uh, she had a grand slam in the, I believe it was the quarters. Not 100% sure, but everything kind of blurs together when you've been doing it this long. Whoa, that is a camera. I didn't want to drop that. All right, I'll do that. And we'll try and get that going for you here just momentarily. <clears throat> and Selker. The 1-2 pitch. 
missing right there. Two and two now to Jordan Klingensmith. One of the Riverhawks, the younger Riverhawks last year that did uh, have a chance to get some quality playing time uh, for Coach Schaefer. So you would certainly expect her to be a big part of this offense once again this year. We count two and two. Delivery there by Selker. Change up, and she got her. Just fluttered across the letters. And Selker picks up another K. Down goes Jordan Klingensmith. The backwards K brought to you by Steffi's Country Catering. Make sure you check out Steffi's online, Facebook. Uh, you can search Terry Steffi. And you know what? It's about time to start thinking about those graduation parties and uh, all the fun stuff that comes with the summer and if you mention high top sports network terry will slick you up with a 10 percent discount for your next event now that's only an event can't do it on the sunday takeout but i advise checking that out as well sunday takeout specials just dynamite and terry knows how much we enjoy them over at high top headquarters because pretty much every time it's my turn to cook i just uh put my order in there on facebook and Terry takes care of the rest. It's kind of funny. I said uh, for baseball, he was the stolen base sponsor because of his blazing speed on the base pass. And he said, that's a little known baseball tidbit. Terry Steffi stole one base threat back in the day. So right now, Selker will be working against Madison Baker, her mound counterpart here. As we have one away here in the bottom of the second inning. <clears throat> if you hear me getting a little flustered, it's because I have eight million wires <laughs> at my feet and there's some of them are tangled up. I'm trying to remedy that situation. Selker fires in there and Baker takes a good healthy cut at that one, fouls it straight back, so most likely Sid will not be throwing that pitch again to Baker. She was just a hair off of it. I mean, it was a big cut by Baker. She knew what was coming, a little heat up high. Couldn't do anything with it, but it's usually a good sign that a batter has the speed well judged. That fastball up and in, and did it hit Baker? I believe it did, unless that was ball four. No, it was a 2-2 pitch there, so Baker must have caught her somewhere. But she will be replaced at first base, a courtesy runner coming in for the River Hawks. <clears throat> what am I doing here? Okay, there we go. I was trying to find the roster. So going to first base, uh, the courtesy run for the River Hawks. That will be Rachel Ban. And at the plate for Armstrong now. We are looking at Maddie Sturgeon, another freshman uh, outfielder, getting some playing time here during the exhibition schedule. thing here and we'll get you that batter's box view swing and a miss right there by Sturgeon <clears throat> pardon me the wind up here it's starting to get to that time of year where the allergies just ain't fun yeah, I see those buds and, and flowers growing. And I think, boy, it's going to be beautiful, but I'm going to be sneezing. And that one gets the corner again. Selker 
just expert as she is painting. Painting those corners. It's uh, really fun to watch, actually. She's such a good pitcher, such a great athlete. All-state volleyball player, too, just so you know. Uh, and she is quite the competitor. I mean, you don't meet many high school kids that have the compete level uh, that Sydney Selker does. So it's always, always fun to watch her, no matter what we're playing. There goes the roster. Oh, Nate. I need you, Nate. I move one thing. There goes the roster. Nate is on it. Nate Bailey should have been a wide receiver in high school with hands like that. Thank you, Nate. Try not to ruin your whole afternoon. <laughs> he said it doesn't bother him. And if folks out there don't know uh, Nate Bailey, he was an absolute monster on the offensive line for Armstrong during his high school days. Played at Mercyhurst in college. And... Uh, uh, the, the term road grader applies when it comes to Nate, but really an athletic offensive lineman. He'd get down the field, and he was crucial to Zane Dudek setting multiple school and WPIL records during his senior year. That one blooped. It's going to drop. And a base knock and a double sliding in there. Good hustle by Emma Paul. She just stuck her bat out there and kind of served it into right field. And Paul, no hesitation, she knew it was dropping the whole way. Never slowed down around first and slides into second with an extra base hit. And that's probably one of the shortest doubles Emma Paul's ever hit, but that gives the Riverhawks two in scoring position here, just one away. Or excuse me, two outs, apologies there. Uh, here in the bottom of the second. So Selker trying to work out of a jam. She did so in the first. And really reached back for that one. Kind of got away from her. Ball outside. Selker right now working to try and get out of a jam without allowing any more damage here. And that one again off the plate. Shelby Cloak, who went yard her first time up at the plate right now. Chance to pick up a couple more RBIs here if she can find the outfield. Cloak obviously showed off the power there in her first at bat. Let's see if she can find a base hit here and Add to the Riverhawks lead. Selker obviously wants to avoid that. That one got it. The I love this umpire. I've seen him lots of times. He has a very slow and deliberate strike call. And so where I'm positioned out here in left center, I can kind of get a really good idea of if it's going to be a strike or not. But the the call is so slow as he raises his arm and makes a fist for a strike. Uh, that sometimes I get fooled, but not fooled there was Cloak as she walks to load the bases. And now Selker uh, in a definite jam as the Riverhawks have them loaded. And Prezenica, who doubled off the right field fence her first time up, she is at the plate and looking to really put a crease in the scoreboard here. A crooked number uh, for the Riverhawks. As I mentioned, Prezenica with that, that double to right field. Her first time up. That one low. Selker misses. I got, uh, I got wires. I need uh, one of those wire organizer things. They make those, right? I believe they're called interns, so if you want to get a high-quality internship here with High Top Sports Network, come and help me stay organized. Fun for the whole crew. All right, I think I got it now. Selker is behind Prezenica. 
2-0. and Reese Selker came out to talk to her and missing again. I believe that was a ball there. So the bases are loaded. Nowhere to put for Zeneca. So Selker really kind of struggling right now to find that strike zone. And that one right at the knees. And she'll get a strike there. Boy, that was a big one. Uh, Selker really needed that one. And she found the strike zone to make it 3-1. and one. So they call this a hitter's count. And Prezenica once again trying to do damage. But Selker not allowing it on that pitch. And she gets Prezenica to swing right through it. And a huge pitch here. The payoff pitch. Full count. Bases are full of Riverhawks. And a swing and a miss. Selker out of it. And that is, oh man, ice water in the veins there by Sydney Selker. As she is able to work back from a 3-0 count. And get Prezenica for the final out of the Armstrong half of the second inning. one nothing Riverhawks here on this Armstrong Indoor Athletics game day. My name is Josh Treckengoss. Hope you're doing well. It's a sunny day. A lot of clouds in the sky, but once that sun peaks out, boy, does it feel great. And we'd also like to thank Bird's Foot Golf Course, our home away from home here at High Top. Thanks to Travis, Trevor, Alicia, and the crew. Claire Kreitzer. A former Yellow Jacket, also the event coordinator out there at Bird's Foot. Claire's a great friend of ours. And we got to witness some pretty amazing moments in her high school career, especially on the volleyball courts. So thanks to Bird's Foot, our official golf course. Hey, it's great to uh, own a business and have an official golf course. It, it don't get much better than that. All right. I'm doing some things, obviously. You can kind of hear me moving around. Ugh. Luckily, I'm kind of tall, so I can reach a lot of places. Uh, I need that in this job. Hey, let's see if we can get her going here. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Now, let's do this. I know, I, I talk to myself, you know, they say it is a sign of genius. That's at least what I tell my kids. Uh, you know, hey, your dad's a genius. Yeah, he might sound like a crazy man while he's talking to himself, but trust me, genius level. Oh, just working with this camera just where I need it to be, and then I'll bring her online, and you guys can get a look uh, in tight there at the uh, baker and the hitter and the catcher and all that good stuff. Now we're about back. Let's see if that'll work there. That looks pretty good. Bring it up here online here just a second. Uh, baker working to Clark right now. Got her the first time around. down in the count one and two that ball sprayed out towards right field it's going to be foul uh, keeps the count at one and two A 
over to Paul. Her throw a little bit high, but Pew, what a play. Gets up off her feet there and snags the errant throw by Paul, but able to catch it is Pew and get the tag down. So nice play by Jesse Pew over there at first. And, you know, Pew kind of known uh, as, a, as a big power hitter. Uh, but I always tell people, you know, her, uh, her skills defensively at first base and just knowing where everything is, she is really, really sharp there at first. And her uh, heads up play right there, you got to know when to give up the bag as a first baseman. That's one of the hardest things to teach uh, a young first baseman is to know when to give up that bag and get off of it. And she saw that ball coming out of Paul's hand, knew it was going to be offline, gave up the bag made the catch and got the tag down and uh, Clark with some good speed up the line there but Pew able to to get that tag down and get a very crucial out one away here in the top of the third River Hawks lead two nothing or excuse me one nothing pardon me has made a uh, a run appear there in my mind I don't know how that happened Exactly working here on my on my end. I'll just see if I can get a remedy real fast. And looking back, Schmidt over there at first. That was Bauer behind the plate. Don't worry, I'm still here. I'm just uh, looking for something. Try and get that other camera for you folks. I mean, it looks good. I just uh, can't get it to come up on the screen. I think the, I'm just giving you a look inside here. This is the, the magic. I believe the battery of the camera is a little, a little funky at the moment. So I don't know if that has anything to do with it. Uh, we'll find out. Keith Schaefer out there trying to get an explanation for something. Not sure what. I'm going to see if I can do one thing before I scrap this whole plan <laughs> and try something new. I don't like the scrap plans, but sometimes you gotta. Okay, let's try this. That's not doing it. Okay. Runner down to first base there. Oops, my phone went away. That is Schmidt. Uh, two away. Oh, and that ball just off the glove of Klingensmith and into right field. Quick backup there by Sturgeon and right. Um, Klingensmith. That ball wasn't really hit all that hard by DeJitis, but I think it kind of got Klingon Smith to misjudge her jump a little bit. I think she jumped just a touch too early, probably thinking that ball was hit harder than it actually was. 
And it just tipped off her glove into right field, so a hit for Degitis. And that will bring Sid Zelker to the plate. Big cut. I think that's Sid. I'm not sure. Yes, it is. So Degitis, I mean, B Baker made a pretty good pitch on that, I thought. You know, high and tight. In on the hands of the lefty, Degitis. But she was able to get the bat head around quickly and make just enough contact to serve it up high. And there's a rip, but Jordan Klingensmith is there that time. Didn't have to jump for that one as Selker lines it right into her glove, and that's the final out of the Freeport third inning. Nate Bailey again. I didn't even know that blew away that time, Nate. Thank you. Well, I'm going to owe Nate some money at the end of this game for sure as he keeps tracking down my stuff that blows away. I'm trying to put things on top of it, but, you know, it's not like I'm doing anything else here. So, getting ready to head to the bottom of the third. Riverhawks up 1-0. A uh, little bit of a pitcher's duel going on here. Madison Baker and Sydney Selker going at it. Uh -huh. And Selker, as uh, her first two times around here, has had to really work out of some jams. Bases loaded last inning, second and third in the first, but able to do it. And uh, you don't get Division I scholarships for uh, being a mediocre pitcher. And Sydney Selker certainly is not that. She is, like I said, just a, a competitor through and through. And if you've ever had a chance to watch her on the volleyball court, and in the circle, as we have numerous times over the past four years, you can really understand why we have such an appreciation for her. Uh, not to mention the fact she's a great kid from a great family. That is always a help, you know, when you do this job like we do. And we're, you know, we're members of the community that we serve. And we, we know people. We see people. And people have... Uh, you know, their opinions one way or another. Most of the time, I would say the majority of the time, very supportive of what we do here in the greater Armstrong County area. I say greater because, you know, we cover Armstrong, we cover West Shemokin, we cover Freeport, that's a border school. Kiski, that's a border school. And, you know, we do a lot of, uh, especially come playoff time, a lot of District 6 games out in Indiana County. Uh, during the regular season, WPL games all through Butler and Allegheny. So we're everywhere. And then once it gets to uh, PIAA time, boy, we were in Bald Eagle area uh, last week. And let me tell you, brother, that was uh, not, a, not a quick drive <laughs> out to Bald Eagle in Belfont, PA. And, you know, the worst part about it is was snowing and you know there's no there's no uh there's really no straight shot from 80 back to Catanning and you got to come down from Brookville and it's just windy and dark and got to give credit to Joe Rhodes he drove the made the drive for us and man oh man he was he was fighting he was fighting for the cause but he got us there and home safely it was a heck of an effort. That's one as a coach, you know, you would be like, it's a heck of an effort out there, kid, little ad boy. And Joe got us back to the high top headquarters in one piece. So I'm trying something else here. We'll get her. Let's do this and maybe this. I don't know. Whoa. Don't want to knock my other camera over. That would not be good real time here folks you get it in real time okay now let's do this as well Selger out of the game right now uh, now in pitching that's Smith so I mean I don't really blame uh, Ron DeJitis the Freeport manager I don't really blame him for taking Sid out get her three innings uh, she threw a fair amount of pitches, not over the top amount of pitches. Let's just take a look at her line real quick. 
So Silker, three innings pitched. Or excuse me, two innings pitched. She's came, she came out here. Um, and now Smith in the game for the Jackets. Three hits, one run, one earned, two walks, five strikeouts. So, you know, no reason to, to wear Sid Selker out. Um, if you're on to Jitus right now with the, the section schedule, always a battle in uh, Freeport section. So uh, Selker gets the start. Pitch as well. Oh, look at Pew. Heads up play. She's going to be in there. And she's thinking about going to third, but she hits the brakes. Talk about a heads up play. Jesse Pugh, nice base running skills. Right there. She gets down to second on the delayed steal. Uh, catch her through behind her. She took off. And that's one thing that the Riverhawks do very, very well um, is that delayed steal. Try this again. Get that right there. Oh boy. Uh, okay. Uh, there's some music being played down there. I don't know why. I don't know if we have a pinch hitter. I don't think so. Uh, Brother Jess tuned in at home. What's up, Jess? Glad you're watching. Not a surprise that you are. Thank you for the um, heads up on the view. We're going to get another one here, bud. Don't worry. Just have to uh, find the right combination. All right, down at second base now, Jesse Pugh. I closed my game changer. Shouldn't have done that. Open that back up. And I believe at the plate right now for the River Hawks. Uh, I'm going to say that. Let me get to the game stream here. Yeah, Bauer walked, and then Ban came in to pinch run. And now we got Ziggler at the plate. I think that was the way it went last time around. I'll just make sure. <clears throat> uh, actually, Lily Guthrie into pinch run, so. Guthrie at first, Pew at second, and Ziggler at the plate. Swings over that change up. It's in the dirt. Pew and Guthrie will both move up. So despite the swing and the miss there by Ziggler, uh, Armstrong gets a couple more base runners into scoring position. And a swing, and that one's going to drop in. Left field, Ziggler with an RBI single. Here comes Guthrie. She's in, beats the throw home. And advancing after the RBI base hit is Ziggler down to second. So Riverhawks add two more, courtesy of that two-run single by Natalie Ziggler. Good piece of hitting right there by Ziggler. Waited, got her pitch, and was able to do the damage. A two run base knock. And that one fouled away. At the plate, base knock again. That one's going to get to the fence into the left center field gap. Jordan Klingensmith will drive home. Ziegler with run number four for Armstrong. So four nothing now, Hawks. Non-conference action here uh, at Armstrong Junior Senior High School. My name is Josh Rattengoss. Thanks for tuning in to High Top Sports Network. Always love to have you. And love that you're spending some of your time with us this afternoon. Gorgeous day. You could be doing anything in the world right now, but you're here with me. Hey, all right. Well, folks, uh, we'll get her up here one second. <clears throat> uh, 
<clears throat> and that ball hit toward right field. It's going to drop, but just foul. So I'll pull that up there. Remember, bring this here. Again, talking to myself. Sign of genius. Really, it is, I swear. All right, there's that second look that I was teasing you about for, geez, two innings. Uh, but there it is. I think we can put the first cable I used in the trash base knot up the middle around third is Clayton Smith. She scores. And an RBI single there from Madison Baker helping her own cause. Five nothing Hawks. Here in the bottom of the third, well, Selker came out. Uh, obviously was scheduled for her to come out after two innings because she certainly could have kept going, but now that Smith is in the game for Freeport, you know, the Riverhawks uh, have jumped on her a little bit and put up four runs this inning. And still hitting only, oh, there's nobody out, wow. So nobody out there for the Riverhawks. Dojan up, base knock, and the hits. Keep on coming. Armstrong doing some damage here in the bottom of the third inning. I'm gonna get ya a little tighter there. We'll do this. Just get a little bit tighter on that, that mound view. Well, I guess it's not a mound in softball, it's a circle. And we're gonna have a meeting in the circle right now, the Yellow Jackets taking uh, a moment to maybe calm Smith down just a touch. Uh, it's difficult, you know, you're coming in against this team, uh, I wouldn't say historically a great hitting team, but certainly over the past three seasons, just a phenomenal offense here at Armstrong. And they're a 5A school, you know, uh, Freeport 3A. Well, they got, they're 4A in softball, excuse me. And out there, you know, throwing is a girl who's just a sophomore, you know, and she's, uh, well, we got a pitching change, I believe. Yes, we do. Uh, now is Leah Clark, a freshman. So we went from Lauren Clark, the sophomore, to Leah, the freshman. And while we have a moment as Leah warms up, we're gonna take a quick commercial break and thank today's official broadcast partner, Armstrong Indoor Athletics. Armstrong Indoor Athletics, located at 132 South Grand Street Avenue in downtown Catanning, offers a state-of-the-art training facility and top-tier instruction by experienced coaches to help turn your youngster into the best baseball or softball player they can be. Batting cage and bullpen lane rentals are available for 30 to 60 minute sessions, and you can also sign your baseball or softball player up for private hitting, pitching, fielding, and catching instruction with our Nova Group staff. Be sure to visit Armstrong Indoor Athletics online at AIA.team or call them at 724-599-9761 for more information today. And welcome back to High Top Sports Network. Josh Rutnost here with you this afternoon. I got to say that, oh boy, I'm extremely happy with the weather today the past two Armstrong Freeport games have been rough for the kid. Really two years ago, just uh, one of the all time worst uh, that I've ever experienced. Cold rain, snow, sleet, uh, fried monitor. Glad I didn't get electrocuted. Uh, but not just that, both teams scoring a ton of runs. I think there was 36 runs in the game. And I was going from uh, here to West Shimoka to do boys volleyball and I just had to leave. A. I really couldn't take it anymore. I, I mean, I was, I couldn't, I didn't have a monitor. I didn't know what was going on on the stream anyway. So I just shut her down. I think I was in the sixth inning when I shut it down and I got in the car, drove out to West Shemokin, had to raid the tech ed room to get a monitor and uh, was able to do that, thankfully. And um, got the boys volleyball game there that night. It was awful, I gotta tell you. It was, I, I, I got a, a bad one last year too. I think, uh, I wanna say it was Indiana, maybe Nishanik. I don't know, it was a red and white team. 
and it was so windy that Joe Rhodes uh, came up here prior to the game, hours before the game, as that one's chopped short, forced out at third, for out number one this inning, if you can believe it. Fielder's choice there. That's Jakanski. Grounds to short, little 6-3 put out there to cut down the lead runner. But Joe Rhodes came up here and worked his tail off trying to build me some kind of cover. It was a, it was a modified duck blind, let's put it that way. It was awesome uh, until the wind really started blowing. I mean, this thing was like bungee quartered down. We had weights on stuff and it didn't matter. I mean, the wind had to be 50, 60 miles an hour up here and uh, Dozik Zablocki, former River Hawk football standout, who was. Hey guys, stay over there, please. Cameras, thanks. A uh, little guy just caught a touchdown, he was fired up, so I don't want to. Hey, you gotta have fun when you're at a game when you're a kid and they're out throwing the football there beside me, but I think a finger or two came up in, in your uh, screen up top there, so let's just try to limit that. But Dozik Zablocki uh, hung tight with me in the, the duck blind and was holding it down, was literally holding it down as I was running the stream. There's a fielder's choice. It's going to be an RBI ground out over to third. Is Emma Paul, so. Uh, Paul advancing. Well, that's interesting. They have Paul up. She's certainly not up. I really hope that my game changer's not frozen. She's down at third base, trust me. I see her down there, number five. Oh wait, no, sorry. That's, uh, I am all discombobulated here. There's, uh, that's definitely not Emma at the plate. Oh boy. Let's just get the roster out here. No, Emma Paul is at third base, uh, next to her father, Jamie, down there, coaching third. And at the plate right now is Isabel Prezenica. So we are, well, it's catching up right now, so I'll let you know. And Prezenica extends the arms. That went deep to center field. It's off the fence. Paul trots home. Prezenica into second with her second double of the game. RBI double by Isabel Prezenica. Makes it 6 nothing, I believe. Or maybe 7. We're going to have to wait. Uh, I can't see the actual scoreboard here, and I was yapping about being in a duck blind. So. But I'll never forget that game because of Dozik. He, he came in, he crawled under there with me and held everything together uh, while the wind was just torturing us. And as soon as he left uh, at the conclusion of the game, I said, thanks, Dozik. Really appreciate you, man. As soon as he left and let go, it blew into my face. I caught a canopy beam to the nose, and expletives were yelled and I got pretty much everyone here to turn and look <laughs> uh, because I was just at my wits end with the uh, the wind and then two guys from the I think it was Nishanik now that I think about it but uh, two guys uh, from their fan base ran over and they helped me get everything together so I didn't lose any equipment Paul waits on the change or excuse me Pew waits on the change up drills it off the center field fence and Prezenica in the score, pew! She slides around the tag and gets in there for the with the RBI double. How about Jesse Pew waiting on that changeup and just serves it, and that's how much power she has. That was nothing but her forearms doing that right there, and she hit it about halfway up dead center right under the scoreboard. And that's the kind of pop that Jesse Pew packs at the plate. And so now, uh, we're gonna get a well, little visit there from Selker over to talk to Leah Clark a little bit. Jesse Pugh, wow, that was, I mean, she had already taken her step, kind of expecting a fastball, planted her foot, and then just used her forearms, really in her shoulders, to smack that one off the center field fence for Zanica. An easy trot home, and then, you with the smooth base running and the slide around the tag right there is uh, trying to bring that tag back. I believe that was Kelly Schmidt out there at second. She tried to swipe back at Pew, but Pew, a veteran there inside the tag with the RBI double. So the Riverhawks keep it rolling here, eight nothing. 
Armstrong in. Bottom of the third. <clears throat> and ground ball. Shortstop picked up, fires, that's a low throw and it gets through the wickets of Schmidt over there at first. Excuse me, that's not Schmidt, she's at second, apologies. Uh, they don't have a number, it's 21 for Freeport and that is Jamie Radvan, you know that name if you follow uh, Freeport softball. Quite the, uh, quite the softball family, the Radvans. Uh, but that throw coming in low and hot. Uh, from Abby DeJitis out there at short, and it's not like she doesn't have the arm to get it there. She, I think she just just kind of palmed that ball, and it, it went in low on Radvan and through the wickets, another run scores. As Pew, oh no, she didn't. Huh? She's at third base. Well, I thought she did, you know. It kind of just take for granted that the River Hawks are gonna take that extra base. Uh, but Pew's still standing out there at third. And now Ziegler. Ground ball, one hopper, over to third, finally crosses Clark, and they get out of it. Finally, Freeport able to end the Armstrong third inning, but not before the Hawks put a seven spot on the scoreboard. River Hawks now leading eight, nothing over the Freeport Yellow Jackets non-conference action here. Softball action, I said uh, on the baseball broadcast on Monday, uh, we're not used to going so deep into basketball season. This year we were able to roll with the Marion Center girls and do a state semifinal game in basketball and it just like, I don't know, you blink and you turn around and it's baseball and softball season and uh, just for every athlete, you know, adjusting to a new, um, season a new sport you know take some time and it does that for us too it took us uh, taking us a little time to get back in the mode of baseball softball spring sports outdoors i'm like i was leaving and i thought well i better put another <laughs> i better put a heavier shirt on and then i got the old vest out for some extra insulation because listen if you've ever been to a game up here you know what it's about I see some blankets down there uh, on the Riverhawks side of things. I mean, even as nice as it was today, or, or it has been, still, that, that wind can get to you. All right. So that's going to bring us to the top of the fourth inning. Freeport trails Armstrong. 8 0. Uh, Pew and Prezenica really big at the plate for the Riverhawks today. And uh, just. Shows you that the, just because Jenna Collins isn't here, just because uh, Emma Smerick isn't here anymore, uh, there's no slowdown in this Riverhawks offense. It just isn't. And, you know, you got Emma Paul, you got Jesse Pugh, and I've really been impressed by Prezenica so far. First time getting to see her uh, play some varsity, you know, get some varsity action. And, you know, she obviously has some pop in that bat as boy um who was that couldn't pull the pad back and just take her high fastball out of the zone but it got a piece um who was that reese selker yeah got a piece of her bat and instead of it being a ball up high and out of the zone it is a foul ball strike so that makes it oh and two swing and a miss and baker that was a little soft stuff away it had some spin on it for sure uh, break it away from Reese Selker, and she goes down swinging, and let's take a look uh, quickly here at Madison Baker's line. She has been very, very good. Baker, three and a third, two hits, no runs allowed, and that was strikeout number five for Madison Baker, so good start for her, and her first pitch in there for a strike to Clark. There are two Clarks in the game, don't worry, I'll, uh, it just says Clark. <laughs> this is Lauren at the plate. Number 12. And Baker, swing and a miss. And she's just cruising right now, you gotta love that. Uh, watching her work. 
she, um, you know, she, she let's face it, I, uh, she probably thought she was good enough uh, to get more work than she did uh, leading up to this, her senior year. And, oh boy, strike three, paints the corner. And strikeout number two this inning by Baker. And that is number six for the game. But uh, what I was saying, you know, Baker probably felt like, hey, I'm, I'm good enough to get some varsity innings here. But Cam Sprankle, she just, she held on to that starting spot. Never did anything to lose it, certainly. And, and one thing I will say about Cam, not an overpowering pitcher in terms of velocity. But boy, could she mix it up. Uh, great speed changes, location, different kinds of off-speed stuff. And when the stage was the biggest, uh, Cam Sprankle pitched the best. And that's one thing you want out of your starting pitchers. When the stage gets bigger, the lights get brighter. You know, they up their game. And the best games that I saw Cam pitch in high school were playoff games. I mean, just phenomenal uh, against Penn Trafford in that state semi game. I, uh, Armstrong won three to two, I believe, uh, at Mars. And Cam was just lights out. I think she gave up two runs in the first inning and then nothing <laughs> for the rest of the game. And she, as I said, she uh, did not relinquish that starting spot. And of course, uh, the coaches worked in Baker uh, the past couple of years when they could, where they could. Obviously, you, gotta, you know you got a good starting pitcher waiting in the wings, but you also don't want to mess with the rhythm of a team, especially when they've been winning at the clip that Armstrong has been. And swing and a miss again, the rise. Gets another strikeout, so three strikeouts that inning as Gorley goes down. Baker now up to seven for the game. And Riverhawks uh, have not really been threatened uh, so far in this one. Freeport offense uh, being held at bay here by Madison Baker, doing a great job in the circle for the Hawks. And what do we got here? No, I just got some message that went away. Some kind of error message, I'm not sure. And what I do have to do is get this phone plugged in because we're zipping through the battery. Uh, I have my charger, there it is. <laughs> so make sure you stay tuned to High Top Sports Network. You'll see, take a look at our website, social media, uh, platforms, uh, where we're gonna be tomorrow. It'll be an Armstrong County softball showdown. Leechburg and West Shemokin. We'll have that on the network tomorrow afternoon. And I'll tell you what, those, uh, those Wolves, man, they're gonna be dangerous. They have a lot of offense uh, being led right now by senior Lily Jordan just mashing the ball. Uh, Lily with four home runs in her first three games, I'm not sure. Um, she's added to that total since what day is this Wednesday since Monday well uh, you just gotta keep yeah, I kind of have to move my phone around I'm sorry to, to get the best reception up here as it is my mobile hotspot therefore running the stream and also running game changer is that one is picked up on the infield base hit to start it I mean everything looking good over here I uh, looks good on my live preview it's not buffering or anything so hopefully you folks out there uh, at home are enjoying a, a smooth broadcast <coughs> well that was Jordan Klingensmith with the leadoff base hit and 
So make sure I got everybody correct here. And who's up? Who's out on the field? Baker at the plate and yes, Leah Clark still. Uh, in the circle for the Jackets. Service is excellent, so we're gonna we're gonna bank on that and uh, hopefully Uh, you folks out there are getting, uh, as I said, a smooth broadcast. All right. Well, Baker at the plate right now. Down at first is Clinton Smith after her leadoff single. It was cut down in the infield and a walk to Baker. So Lily Guthrie has replaced Baker on the base paths. Uh, the first couple times around. Let's see if she does again. I think we're going to get a different courtesy runner here for Madison Baker this time around. Keith Schaefer. Uh, doing a lot of work to that lineup card today. I uh, want to see who got down there. I think it was number 17 for Armstrong. Check the old Ross there. Indeed, Emily Brown, sophomore. Uh, down there at first base. Clayton Smith at second. Nobody out. And River Hawks trying to put a couple more on the board here against Clark if they can. And waiting on that, grounding it up the middle, but fielded it second, get the force. We should have just hung on to that one, but Clinton Smith has not forced the issue. Uh, the throw across there, not. So now we have runners at first and third. One away, Riverhawks up 8-0 on the Yellow Jackets. Not ripped left side through, base hit, RBI, Emma Paul. Oh, that ball in tight. Good velocity there uh, by Leah Clark going against the number two hitter, Shelby Clo, because it's homered and walked. So far in this one, and I believe also a fly out, if I recall correctly, I'm not sure. Runners at first and second, that's Paul and Guthrie. And that ball in the dirt blocked nicely by Selker. Clark delivers here, rolls that one in, so that's going to walk the bases loaded. Uh, never tempted to swing at that with Shelby Cloak in the dirt. Well, I always say that in the dirt, but it's not really dirt. It's field turf. But she kind of bowled that one across home plate. And that'll bring the bases loaded for Presenta because she's had a big day at the plate. Trying to add to it. And ripped towards short. Quick toss. Only going to get one, so a run will score on the RBI ground out. So Presenica adding to the RBI total today. Uh, she's got a few. Okie dokie. And Jesse Pugh at the plate now, 10 nothing Riverhawks. Emma Paul at third, Presenica at first. And Pugh takes that pitch. And Presenica down to second without a throw. So I'd say that would be defensive indifference. I'm sure Selker's not going to fire down there with Emma Paul at third. So I guess it still goes as a stolen base. I don't know. I have to look up the rule on that. And Pew just in front of that offering. Keith Schaefer down to his knees. Can't make the play. Error on the manager. Keith Schaefer going to have to tell him, hey, either stay in your box or make the play, coach. Keith, uh, a great guy, an awesome, awesome coach. Really a softball, baseball, softball lifer. So 
by Keith. A visor guy down there at third. Pew waits on it, rips it, and again, splits the outfielders. A couple more come in for the Riverhawks. 12-0 Armstrong. And Jesse Pugh, just the uh, professional hitter up there, I'm telling you. Last two times, trying to get her with a changeup, that is a mistake. Because if that thing is anywhere near the plate, she's just going to wait on it and smash it. Um, last time up, about halfway up the fence out there. And this time, short hop center field fence. And brings home two more for Armstrong. So... That ball ripped, and it's off the base of the fence in left field. Pew, she's going to hang at second base and all the way around, having to hit the brakes and retreat. After a nice swing there was Abby Bauer. And it doesn't look like the, doesn't look like the offense has gone anywhere. Uh, yeah, half of it, or more than half of it, might be up again. And, but the uh, Riverhawks still showing that Despite the losses to graduation, they can still smack the ball around the yard. 12 on the board here against Freeport. That ball in the dirt. Bounces away from Selker to the backstop. Pew tiptoes down to third and behind her. Into second base will be Bauer. So not... Uh, not much going Freeport way, Freeport's way here. And that ball skied, shallow right. Going to be a tough play and able to hang on at second. Nice snag going over her shoulder and running back. That was Schmidt. Tracks it down and gets. Yellow Jackets out of the inning, but the Riverhawks tack on. Four more here, 12 nothing Armstrong. As we get ready to head to the top of the fifth inning here on High Top Sports Network. Josh Rettengoss with you. Thanks for tuning in. As I said, always glad whenever you spend part of your day with us. Doing something here. Always doing something. And I want to say a special thanks to Armstrong Co Athletic Director Jay Canish. I mean, he was waiting in the parking lot to pick me up. I mean, it's a lot of equipment to, to walk up over this hill. And Jake was waiting for me. And uh, I had put an extension cord in the baseball dugout like utility closet last year it wasn't there uh and so where i'm set up in left center i i need that extension cord uh, to get power over here for everything and the one i had brought with me was about 50 feet short <laughs> i mean it was a 50 footer but i i needed the full hundred to get over here and i'll tell you what jake canish just i didn't even ask him he just turned around and left and I thought, oh, man, I probably should have asked him to uh, see if he could find me an extension cord. No sooner than I pick up my phone uh, to call him than he was driving back with an extension cord. So thank you, Jake Canish. Uh, always on top of it here at Armstrong. I, I really appreciate him for, you know, everything he does for us. Uh, I got to tell you that it's, it's not an easy job um, to be the athletic director. It just isn't. Uh, at any school and you know they don't make much money I gotta tell you it's uh, sometimes a thankless job which I'm pretty familiar with and Jake does it well and he does it with uh, a smile on his face and he never ever ever you know gets flustered and I ask him for stuff all the time and I'm like Jake I need this Jake I need this and he always comes through so I appreciate you Jake Canish. Thank you, sir, for uh, helping make my life just a little bit easier today. I'm able to telepathically sense that I needed <laughs> the uh, the exclam or the um, extension cord. I was going to say exclamation point because I'm looking at one, but uh, 
Jake is the man. He he did a great job uh, for us all through football, basketball. I mean, he's he's been great ever since he's been on. Uh, and been promoted to that position, you know. The Kenny Stewart, long time athletic director, passing away in 2020, and uh, Todd Harvey and Jake Canish have split the duty since, and they've been awesome, and especially awesome to us. Uh, we're here quite a bit, uh, as you know, if you follow High Top Sports Network. We're this is you know one of our I would say kind of like home schools, and you know. I, I think we have great relationships with all of our athletic directors, including Sean Stevenson down at Freeport. Um, but Jake, uh, I got to tell you, man, he came through today. So thank you, Mr. Canish. I hope you go back at this broadcast and, and check it out and see that I don't just make fun of your playlist during basketball season. <laughs> he, uh, Logan Badak, who plays first base for the Armstrong baseball team and also does some broadcasting for us at high top I got him going about it on the air as that ball served out in the left field nice bit of hitting right there we're gonna look that name up <laughs> but that was a nice you know there's some of these small lefties you'll see during softball they get in there and they slap at the ball and use their speed to get down the line well right there Megan Grolamond is her name first at bat right there listed at five feet all of five foot tall and she took that pitch now into the game of course uh, this is no longer baker on the hill if you haven't noticed i, I wasn't talking about it but um rachel ban uh coming in to get some work here riverhawks up big um the groleman that was a nice piece of hitting. Usually those slap hitters, they don't try and get it over the infield. They try to put it on the infield and make those infielders uh, feel the ball and make the throw. But right there, Goleman, uh, she served that pitch right over the left side of the infield and got down to first with a base hit. So that will be a leadoff single for the Jackets here in the top of the fifth inning. Ow. Sorry about that. I... Just went to kneel in front of my computer, and uh, my middle of my knee went right into a rock. <laughs> you just can't make it up. I'm serious. You just that hurt so bad. And I'll give you um, a little bit of context, so something to compare it to. If you have kids, and they're little, and they like to play with Legos, and they leave a Lego on the floor, or a bunch of Legos on the floor, and you're Trying to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night and you're, you're making your way through the hall and it's dark and you can't see anything and then boom, you step on a triangular hard plastic Lego right in the middle of your foot. That is what it just felt like to put my knee down on a rock. <laughs> so, uh, taking one for the team up here in left center. There's Logan uh, walking over, I think. I can't tell. There was somebody in front of him, but... Man, these kids uh, today, they have the bat bags. They just have everything. I didn't have a bat bag like that when I played. It was like uh, more like one of these tripod cases. Real long and thin and not much to it. Sometimes it was hard to get your spikes in it. You know, didn't have all these like uh, like backpacks. You can hold one. It has three bats in there. We, we had three bats for the team. And I'll tell you what, if you if you know your baseball, and you know your high school baseball, you played with a bat that everybody wanted to swing. That ball popped foul and it drops. And, and somebody out there is going to be like, yes, as soon as I say this. You know, I was a... My baseball career was in the 90s. <laughs> so it's been a while. The Easton Black Magic. That bat... I mean, basically, you look at it now, it looks like a piece of lead compared to these bats that uh, the kids use. Now, all the technology that goes into them and, you know, what's your, what your drop angle and how the weight's transferred in the sweet spot. Because that one got him on the double play. Quick thinking there as the line drive picked by Ban, and she turns and fires the first base, and that's going to do it. Riverhawks. 12-0, victorious here at home, and man, 
That was quick work uh, by Armstrong. Uh, they got to that. Uh, you got to be, I think it's 11 after 5. And when they got that 12th round, I thought, boy, Freeport's going to really uh, have to do something to keep this game going. And Groleman started it off there with that, you know, nice, nice little piece of hitting to get it out into left field leadoff single. However, Ban. Uh, really quick in the circle there. She's able to pick that ball and fire over to Pew before Groleman could get back, and that was it. Game-ending double play. Riverhawks win here at home, non-conference, and they've had three, Freeport's number the past three years. Uh, that, that win a couple of years ago here where I told you it was raining and snowing and sleeting, and I lost a monitor that got fried, and that game, I think it was 22 to 14 or 24 to 14 or something. It was crazy. But then last year, Riverhawks at Community Park, uh, a couple of homers uh, to, to beat Selker down uh, in Freeport. And then today, boy, it's going to be tough to really, really judge Armstrong until they start playing against their section, until they start playing some. I, they have Hempfield next Tuesday here at home. We'll be broadcasting that one. But well, that's going to be a good test. Always a good measuring stick to see what you do. Stack up against Hempfield. That's a softball powerhouse. So the Riverhawks. Oh, I see Mike Reed here. What's up, man? How you doing, Mike? Mike Reed, the head varsity boys soccer coach here at Armstrong. Also, one heck of a photographer. And he supplies us with some images throughout the year that we use in the sports section of the Leader Times. High Top Sports Network, the third-party contractor. Uh, we take care of all the content for the Leader Time Sports section, the paper of record here in Armstrong County. And Mike, uh, we've gotten some of the, the nicest photos, the, the best action shots that we've had over the past few years uh, since we launched High Top and came back to the Leader Times. Uh, one in particular, the Cassidy Adams taking the home run away up in, uh, oh, that was a state quarterfinal game against Central Mountain. St. Francis. Yeah. And Mike, you got that perfectly. The best part of that photo is the guy in the chair behind the fence looking like this. Like he's like, oh no, it's going to hit me. But Cass went up and took that one away. So, that was a, that was a win for the Riverhawks that day. They get one again here today at home. And we're going to run down some quick stats here on the Ryan Bowser State Farm postgame show. Ryan, a fantastic sponsor day one sponsor here for us on high top sports network he's post game show sponsor today and let me get out of the video highlights here that they oh they put those up on game changer pretty fast but let's get to the box score here river hawks get a home run from shelby cloak in the bottom of the first that was the opening blow uh, both teams scoreless in the second. Then the, you know, Sydney Selker came out of the game scheduled. Um, you know, she wasn't going to go the whole way here. As I said, you know, why waste her in a non-conference game? Which she is undoubtedly Freeport's ace. So after two innings, Selker exits the game. Take a quick look at her line. Sid Selker. Uh, two innings pitched, three hits, one run. The earned run, that homer by Cloak. Uh, two walks, five strikeouts. So Selker, I mean, she did her job, uh, but not going to go the whole way in an exhibition against Armstrong. And she gave way to, uh, pardon me, I dropped my roster again. Luckily, I didn't need Nate to run it down for me. Um, well, we have Allie Smith in here as coming into pitch. I don't think that was her. First, I thought it was. I thought it was the Clark girls that both pitched, but apparently not. Apparently, I was wrong about that. So apologies. Uh, but on the box score here, uh, coming in to relieve Sydney Selker, Ally Smith, the freshman, and. You know, hey, you're getting thrown in the fire when you're a freshman and playing varsity in any level, any sport. And she had a rough go of things. Four hits, six runs, all of them earned, two walks, no strikeouts. 
and then Lauren Clark, uh, excuse me, Leah Clark, apologies, I think, yeah, Leah Clark, uh, she came in, two innings pitch, six hits, five runs, all of them earned, and two walks, no strikeouts, so Selker, you know, uh, you've seen her keep going the past couple of years against Armstrong, and I don't, you know, I, I agree with what Ron Tejitis did here today, you know, I, I wouldn't waste her. Yeah, of course you put her on the you put her in the circle. It was her birthday yesterday? Of course she's gonna want to pitch. And um, you know Selker, two innings in there, pitched decently. Really, only one mistake. Worked out of a couple of uh, big jams. Did Selker, and you know she came out of the game. And then Armstrong went to town on the less experienced Freeport pitchers and able to win this game in five innings, twelve nothing. So we looked at Sidney Selker's line, the Freeport pitcher's lines. Only three hits today. Uh, Dejitis with a base hit. Groleman with a base hit. And Schmidt, all singles for Freeports. And Armstrong, quite the opposite. Uh, Riverhawks had 12 runs on 13 hits, 12 RBIs. That's a good sign as a team. Six walks, five strikeouts, big game. For Isabel Prezenica, she was two for four, three RBI, two runs scored. Prezenica, a couple of doubles, a couple of RBI doubles, actually. And then right behind her in the batting order, Jesse Pugh, two for three, three RBI, run scored, and a walk. Pugh um, doubled. And also, I guess that, yeah, that one she hit the short hop defense only got a single out of it because it got out there so quick. And it's not, like I said, it's not a big park. So Freeport able to turn it in quickly. And then you go down the line. Emma Paul, leadoff, two for four. Two runs scored, an RBI. Shelby Cloak right after her, the home run, one for two. Two walks and an RBI. Prezenica, as I mentioned, two for four. Two runs scored, three RBI. Then Pew, two hits. Then after her, Bauer with a hit. Followed by Ziegler with a hit. Followed by Klingensmith, two for three. Two runs scored in an RBI. Clinton Smith also a double in this game. And then Baker also had a hit. Boy, oh boy, Sturgeon had a hit too. So really, uh, everyone's swinging the bat well for Armstrong today as they pick up a 12-0 victory. And I'm just sliding down. Oh boy, that is a wild score. Um, I kind of mentioned it on the broadcast. Oh boy. <laughs> Uh, in the baseball uh, game on Monday. Uh, right now, the River Hawks baseball team down 6 nothing to plumb on the road. That's not the wild score I was talking about. I was talking about the West Shemokin Wolves baseball team up on Connemaw, 22 nothing. What is Lou Swartz running for touchdowns in that game? I mean, that is, uh, that's a big number in a baseball game, 22 nothing. Right now, the Wolves uh, up on Connemaw Township. In the third, Yowza. A rough day down there for Connemont Township. And we're going to look at some finals. Yesterday, West Shemokin baseball beat Indiana 15 5. Uh, we got, well, I just said River Hawks. I mean, this is the game you just watched River Hawks 12 0. And that will raise the River Hawks record to 3 0. <laughs> they have not allowed a run this year. 10 nothing over Knott. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it was not 3 0. Well, I guess those were scrimmages against Burl. Um, as I said, they were supposed to take on Hempfield. That game rescheduled to next Tuesday. That'll be here. Uh, so the schedule not completely up to date on their game changer, but I believe the Riverhawks are 3 0. Or 2 0, excuse me. Uh, 10 nothing over Knock on Monday. 12 0. Here today over Freeport and some non-conference exhibition action. And the next game for, let's see, I said the schedule's not updated. I don't know why I'm telling you what the next game's going to be. Maybe I can find it on the internet real quick before I sign off here. Uh, Riverhawks, impressive once again offensively. This team is just, it just keeps on keeps on charging forward um, it's, it's really been fun to watch uh, certainly for us 
here at High Top Sports Network, uh, being able to broadcast so many of these games, just a powerhouse. And I got to tell you, you know, people, you know, it's a, it's a what for me, what have you done for me lately kind of mentality in the world these days. I got to tell you, I've been up here in 2017 covering the Riverhawks, and let me tell you, they weren't beating teams 12 nothing in five innings. In fact, they were on the opposite end of that. Uh, they were they were taking the beating back then. So a real credit to how this program has been developed uh, over the years. Because you know you'd see Franklin Regional on the schedule, and you'd think, oh man, this is going to be 18 nothing in three innings. And a lot of times it was. And those girls didn't mean they weren't playing hard. Didn't mean they weren't you know given everything they had. It just hadn't come together yet. And Boy, about four years ago, it started to come together for these Riverhawks. And, you know, a lot of people, a lot of pundits, uh, you read uh, some of the media and some of the reporting. You'll see that a lot of people think, oh, well, Klontz is gone, Smerrick's gone, Adams is gone, Sprankle's gone, Atherton's gone. These, this team's not going to be good. And I have said, well, I'm going to say it on the, on the air right now for the first time this season. But I, people that I've talked to, uh, stuff that I've written, I think this team's going to be dangerous. I think they're going to be very dangerous. And you get a bat like Prezenica, she hits the way she did today, and, and you got really only one at bat to judge her against a high-quality pitcher, but she hit well against Selker. Cloak, I think, uh, really started to come on late last year and into the playoffs. She was really, really good. I think you got a lot of pieces here. It's obviously a young outfield, and I think Baker feels like, hey, maybe I got a little something to prove. Uh, she pitched extremely well today. Uh, we'll take a look really quickly at Baker's line. Uh, go back. That was the results, the team results. So Baker um, today, four innings pitch, picked up the W. Two hits allowed, no runs, no walks, seven strikeouts. So, I mean, keep your eyes peeled for this Riverhawks team. This isn't just a, you know, a couple year window for this team, I don't think, as long as this season, Emma Paul's at shortstop, Madison Baker's in the circle, that infield all intact from a year ago. You saw what Jesse Pugh could do. Uh, a couple RBI, a couple, two, two run double, or excuse me, two RBI doubles in this one, and both of them were on changeup. She had already taken her step, realized it was a changeup, planted that foot, and just teed off one hit the center field fence, one short hop the center field fence, and they're both line drives. So Pugh obviously dangerous. Top of that lineup really good. Jordan Klingensmith hit the ball well today. And they can field it too. So, you know, what you got is an infield that, you know, you look around it, they're they're pretty battle tested. They've been in some big games. They can all play their positions well. I think once the, the season starts to develop and Emma Paul and Jordan Klingensmith kind of develop a rapport there at short and second. Hey, it's really hard to turn a double play in softball, but you may see a couple this year out of that group. All right, as I mentioned a little bit earlier in the broadcast, tomorrow we will have some softball action. Uh, defending Heritage Conference champion Western Oakland Wolves will be hosting the team with the longest playoff streak in Whippeal softball history that being the Leechburg Blue Devils I'm excited to see that one looking forward to some good softball out there in Rural Valley uh, two teams uh, one really building its history right now and another one steeped in history and achievements uh, that being the Blue Devils really a just a phenomenal story the way they've continued to be successful and, and get to the postseason every single year. I'd have to go back and look. I think it's something like 34 years in a row. Um, you know, it's been an impressive, impressive thing to see what Leechburg has been able to sustain in terms of team success over the past several decades, really. So the JV is here. They're getting ready to uh, take the field, and that means the end of the broadcast for myself. Got to pack up this equipment and go thank Nate Bailey for running my stuff down as it continued to blow away over and over and over and over and over again. Thanks to Nate. Quick on his feet. Quick reflexes. Appreciate you, Nate. So, 
I uh, got to go shake Nate's hand. I'm going to talk to Mike Reed just a little bit while I get packed up here. And we will be back tomorrow. As I said, exhibition softball here early season. I didn't check the weather, hopefully, uh, similar to today. You know, in Western PA, it's never the same two days in a row. So I'm kind of worried. Uh, it could get bad. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to pull up the weather before I get off here. Well, tomorrow, uh, fingers crossed, 52 in sunshine. Not as warm as today, but let's just keep it dry, especially out at West Shemokin. If you've ever been to those fields, you know, excited they put field turf down in the infield, in both the uh, baseball and softball fields. It drains great, but guess what? Uh, the, the two fields are back-to-back, -back, essentially, and the middles of those two outfields it's just a uh, swamp <laughs> so hopefully we stay dry and can get that game in tomorrow it looks like we will so make sure you tune in tomorrow west shimokin and leechburg we'll have it here right for you live and free of charge on high top sports network okay well jv's going through their warm-ups here that means i'm going to get off the air thank you again for tuning in this afternoon appreciate it as always feel free to check us out on social media just search high top sports on facebook at high top underscore sports on x then yeah uh, we're at high top sports network on the gram and uh, i think that's it uh, i'm trying to think if we have any more social media we might uh, we don't have a tiktok but everybody says we should get a tiktok and uh, like I said, I need an intern. So if you're looking for an internship and you know how to do the TikTok, feel free to reach out. Oh, of course, check out the website, hightopsportsnetwork.com. And first pitch uh, about to go down here for the JV game, so I'm going to jump off. Recapping the final score, Armstrong 12, Freeport nothing, a final in five innings. Riverhawks off to a 2-0 start. And that'll do it for us here at Armstrong Junior Senior High School. For the entire High Top Sports Network team, my name is Josh Schreckengoss. Thanks to Armstrong Indoor Athletics. And I bid you adieu. Have a great rest of your day.